Hi, my name is Jeff H. Seip and I have over 10 years of recruiting experience, including five years at Google. In this video, we're going to talk about how to adapt to your interviewer. And all the coaching and interview advice you see out there is only as good as your ability to adapt. And the depth of this subject is overwhelming. So I'm going to throw a ton at you and just know that you can always be prepping and adapting. But the reality of this is just simply having the awareness and knowing how to adapt is a huge first step. And then as you think about this video, again, a lot's coming your way. So one or two big takeaways is going to be incredibly impactful for you, I believe. And so if you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Item one, be yourself. If you are trying too hard to adapt in the interview, first of all, you're not going to perform to the best of your abilities. And second of all, it's just not going to come across as genuine and sincere. So yes, I want you to adapt and flex, but always default to being you. Item two, one of the best ways to adapt is that initial impression. So item two really is introductions matter. So remember, the way to really change the potential state of your interviewer is to show up positively, shoulders back, head up, great handshake, and a smile. That's a great way to start off, and you're instantly adapting in a positive way. I know it's going a little bit off to the side with this item, but I think it's really important. Item three, a huge one that's multiple videos on its own, is body language. There is a ton of data on this subject, and really it's just about understanding and knowing that body language is important and a simple characteristic of body language like mirroring is critical too. So if your interviewer talks with their hands, you are going to want to respond and use your hands a little more. It's just getting into a comfortable and similar physical space with them. Now you're not going to do everything that they do and remember you're naturally leaning in or leaning back these things are happening naturally without you even knowing it's something that we do on a daily basis but the number one item is just having awareness and secondly if you are really uncomfortable mirroring head up shoulders back really really positive body language that's the most important item to keep in mind item four pitch tone and pace so similar to body language, you need to be mirroring these items also. And I really, really think the most critical one is pace. If you talk really fast and they talk really slow, it's not going to be a good match. And I know for me personally, I tend to be low and slow and pause a lot. So somebody who talks really fast, I don't really adapt well to them. So they need to slow down to match my pace. And if I was interviewing and the person was fast, I would pick up my pace to be fast and match their, their speed, right? So same as body language. I don't want you to overthink this. I just want you to have the awareness and the recognition. Item five is really repeated focus and trends. And so I want you to be picking up on the trends of your interviewer. So they might lean heavily technical or they might lean heavily collaborative. And you just want to notice that. So if in your follow-up questions, your interviewer is always like, tell me more about SQL or tell me more about Python. Tell me more about how you collaborated with engineering. You are going to hedge in your examples to be a little bit more technical. If they're more collaborative, you're going to want to talk more about teamwork, working with stakeholders, working with subject matter experts. Just listen to what their triggers are. And that can be in the words that they say and their reaction. If you say something technical and they start smiling and nodding, you know that there's a technical connection there. So just be aware, have that awareness of that connectivity. It's really important. Item six, questions. How your interviewer responds to questions is really important. So it might segue back into item five, or it could be that they hate questions. And with open-ended questions, you start asking follow-up questions and you see their demeanor just shift down. 
you're going to have to do two things. One, you're going to have to say, hey, Sue, I like to ask a lot of questions because I think that translates well into the role, but I'll go ahead and answer. And then in your next answer, ask less or no follow-up questions. You really have to see how they're responding and reacting to your questions. But on the flip side, you get might get somebody who's very conversational and loves questions, so you know you're going to ask more and more questions. Again, this a little adapting can be important. And remember, you might have a bad interviewer who just wants to get through their agenda. That's a sign of a bad interviewer. If they're just there to do the agenda, then they're not really trying to figure out if you're a good fit, if you're a good match. Item number seven, their role. So you're literally going to change your answers just a little bit depending on what the role of your interviewer is. So for example, if it's a hiring manager, you want to focus on getting things done, creating efficiencies, creating great process, taking things off their plate. Whereas with a teammate, you would want to ask more like collaboration questions, talk about collaboration, talk about great teammates and how you've worked well with others in the past, etc. I mean, again, if it's a cross-functional person or somebody in HR, you're going to want to adapt and adjust a little bit differently depending on the person. And you really need to recognize and know who you're interviewing with. If you don't know, please ask your recruiter and or hiring manager before going in just to get a feel and know. Item eight, this is a big one, learned info. So when you get to the end of each interview, especially in the on-site interview, and you get a chance for questions, you really want those questions to focus in more on the role, the goals of the role, what success looks like in the role. And from those answers, you are going to insert that information into the follow-up interview. So for example, uh, maybe you find out that the role requires higher levels of collaboration. Then you're going to go back and you're going to talk a little bit more about collaboration. If you find out the role is a little bit more technical than you originally thought, then you're going to get a little bit more on the technical side of things, focus on those technical concepts. Item nine, this is probably the biggest one and could be its own video. Item nine is their style. Okay, overall, who are they? Are they talkative? Are they direct? Are they an introvert? Are they an extrovert? Overall, are they a good interviewer or a bad interviewer? Are they really kind of rude? Are they funny? How is their overall mood on the interview day? And so for somebody in a bad mood, for instance, you might need to practice empathy because they were in the middle of a work fire and they had to come in and do this interview. They were a last minute replacement and they're not prepared. So you might need to be empathetic and say, hey, I've been in that situation. I understand. Take your time. I'm happy to give a little background on myself while you get prepared. Um, you may need to provide options to an introvert that's just that has poor communication skills and overall can't have a good back and forth. So you might want to present option A and option B to Jane to just give Jane a little bit more leeway, a little bit more flexibility in how she communicates. Again, this could be its own video, but it's a very complex subject. Again, it's just an awareness. I want you to have an awareness walking into the interview. This is this person's style, and I'm going to need to adapt and adjust accordingly. The last two items are going to dive a little bit deeper into higher levels of complexity. So item 10 is VAC, and VAC stands for visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So visual, they're learners who respond to images and graphics. Auditory, these are learners that prefer verbal presentations, which is perfect for the interview. And then kinesthetic are learners that really prefer this physical hands-on approach. So how does this show up in an interview? If your interviewer says, I see what you are saying, you want to provide them as many visuals as possible. And then again, translated in an on-site interview, this means going to the whiteboard frequently as often as you can. If an interviewer says, I hear what you're saying, use clear and concise words, and you're probably going to add another layer of 
detail to just create great connectivity with them. If your interviewer says, I know how you feel, you just want to make it as interactive as possible. Uh, kinesthetic people tend to be very hands-on, which can be very difficult translated in an interview, but you just have to try your best. Again, this is one of the trickier items and a good segue into item 11, personality tests. So in correlation with VAC, it's just important to understand people's learning type, their personality type. I attached a link in the description below that I think it's about 16 different ones that it connects to. I personally like True Colors, DISC, Myers-Briggs. It just might be helpful to go through the exercises and understand different personality types and understand your own personality type. Is this the best use of your time in preparing for an interview? Probably not. But it's just an awareness piece, an awareness that we all operate and function differently. And if you go through and you take some of these personality tests, you might determine, wow, I have really been interacting with people not correctly. And that will translate really, really well into the interview as always, my videos give you a lot to think about, but having that great awareness and using one or two of these skills to adapt and adjust your interviewer is going to help you have tremendous success in the interview. Good luck. If you like my content, please like. If you have any comments, please comment below. And if you like my overall content, please subscribe. Have a great day. Thanks.